So synergy is when a combination of two or more phenomena is greater than the sum of its parts. And we saw this very clearly in Ratatouille. He showed us how chocolate is amazing, strawberries are amazing. Chocolate strawberries? Incredible. And we see a lot of synergy right here at the Abbey. We could all be working in separate areas doing our own things and doing a lot of good, but together we come to the Abbey, we support each other, and it's incredible how much stuff we can get done. Not just stuff, but really important <laughs> transformative activities, Dharma activities. Um, the yearly report just came out and it's really astounding just to see all the YouTube videos, all the um, the teachings, the safe classes, the number of people, participants that we are impacting day after day, year after year. It's really astounding. So I had this idea of um, synergy with two amazing things. Uh, Dharma is incredible and chess is incredible. So when you combine them together, I found it's like double, double incredible, super top Mount Meru out of control, incredible. So just like um, when we watch the news, or um, Venerable often uses the news as a Dharma lesson, and also um, we can use chess as a Dharma lesson. So if we're gonna um, analyze a chess game, we should analyze, why not, the most incredible chess game ever played in the history of the universe. So it is 1858, Paul Murphy, American, um, his immortal game. It's immortal because it will live on um, forever. It will never die. And people are still analyzing, studying, um, and teaching this game. He was 21 years old. So why is this game still, let's not say game, let's say um, this masterpiece. We're not playing a game. We're analyzing for Dharma reasons, okay? So why is this masterpiece still being studied and watched and learned over 150 years later? Development, beauty, patience, sacrifice, and artistic mastery. Those are some of the things I would say. Um, so he was playing against two grown adults, um, an earl and uh, someone else. So the, these other two adults, they were conferring and um, making their choices together, and Paul was just um, playing um, alone by himself. Um, given that he was uh, many hundreds of points over any other player at that time, it wasn't really fair, but at the same time, it's incredible. This is called the, um, the opera game. It was played in Paris at the Opera House. So Paul leads with a standard move right in the middle, and his opponents, um, they come and face. So how do we face people who are confronting us? If they're coming with a lot of hot energy, are we going to match that energy, or are we going to bring the kindness and compassion that we want to share with other people? It can be easy with our um, mirror neurons when we see anger we might want to match it. We might just have this natural reaction. But if we are being mindful and having introspective awareness, we can see our own minds. We can see the needs of the other person and how we can benefit them. We can check our mind, notice if there's anger there, arouse bodhicitta and compassion, and then we can engage with loving kindness. That's the deal. So... Paul moves out his knight to attack the pawn in the middle, and he's going to defend with his pawn also in the middle. We might feel like people are attacking sometimes also, and we might want to defend ourselves, but really check our minds again with mindfulness and introspective awareness. Do we need to be defensive in this situation? Is this a situation where we can actually change our mind and come at it with some more kindness and compassion? If we naturally play into this defensive card, then a lot of afflictions might come up which harm the situation and make it even worse. And if we're not able to engage in this situation, we might just need to take a break, come back for a couple hours, maybe a couple days, and then re-engage and see if we can um, work with this problem in a beneficial way.
So Paul moves back to the middle, attacking the pawn, very standard move. And this is where it gets a little dubious for black. He moves out with the um, bishop trying to attack the knight. And it seems like a good move because the knight is pinned right here. It can't move because then the queen will get attacked. So it can't move, but actually it's not really that great of a move anyways. So Paul decides not to worry about his knight. He takes the pawn in the middle and then the knight is gone. That's fine because Paul returns with the queen taking the bishop. And he, of course, will take the pawn. So now they're even again. The points are even. He's taken with the black as many points as the white has taken. But now look in the middle. Paul has three pieces engaged in the middle, whereas the black just has one piece. So obviously Paul is looking pretty good in this situation. And right here, the pawn is being attacked, threatening checkmate. So black might be feeling a little anxious right now. And when we're feeling anxious, we might want to instinctively engage in some activity to release our anxiety, which might not be necessarily a good activity to engage in. So again, with mindfulness and mental alertness, if we're watching our minds and seeing what is going on, instead of reacting in a harmful way, we can see the anxiety and we can hopefully work with it in a more beneficial way without doing something really harmful. So then, Black is going to respond by blocking with the knight. Good move. It is blocked. He's safe. So he moves the queen out, Paul, to the left side. Now he's attacking the pawn we were worried about before, and he's also attacking the pawn on the left side. So Black might be feeling a little anxious again. That anxiety hasn't, hasn't really gone away. He's going to have to figure out a way to get out of this. He moves the queen to protect the pawn. Okay, that works, but this pawn is still um, really feeling maybe some anxiety. So uh, let's see what Paul does. Instead of taking the pawn, he decides to move his knight out. So now we have more pieces engaged, more attack moving forward, whereas the black is just behind in a defensive protective move. So Paul's got something up his sleeve. There's a reason why he didn't attack this pawn. Let's see what's going to happen. So the pawn moves out, which is protecting this other pawn with the queen, so it can't get attacked. So maybe that anxiety has gone down a little bit. He's feeling good. And the bishop is going to move out to the right side, attacking this knight, pinning it. It cannot move because the queen will get attacked. And that is nine points, so he does not want that queen to get attacked at all. The knight is pinned. It cannot move. Paul is looking very good in this situation with his pieces moved out. So the black moves out with the pawn on the left side, attacking the bishop here. Is Paul going to pull back and defend, or is he going to attack again? It's a bold move with this patience and understanding of what is going on in the situation, seeing the situation clearly, remaining calm and relaxed, then he can make appropriate moves without jumping to something really dumb and losing some pieces. So this is the, the crux of the matter here, staying patient, staying determined, moving forward and continuing the pressure. So he loses his knight, that's three pieces gone, but he takes two pawns back. So now he's down one point. It doesn't look good, but actually when you look on the pieces on the board, it's pretty nice. These are looking really good. And Black is still sweating in this situation because he's in check from the bishop. I know, this is where it really gets messy. The knight moves out to block the king. And now it is pinned also. It cannot move because the king will come under attack. So Paul continues to bring the pain with a uh, queenside castle and moves the rook out into the middle. Now two pieces are attacking this um, knight and he's probably feeling uh, anxiety again, but he's pretty safe for now. His pieces are staying in the back. They're really stuck and he really needs to get some pieces out so he can move this game forward. He moves the uh, rook out to protect, and then 
Paul moves in. The nails are starting to be placed into the coffin. This is the beginning of the end for Black, unfortunately. He loses three, he loses five, and then the rook comes out again, threatening. And he moves his queen out, which unpins the knight. It's kind of a desperate move. He doesn't know what else to do. So, boom, he takes this rook and it's taken back. Now you think that it's um, going to be the queen moving down, but actually he could move the rook too. So he does something surprising all the way down, attacking the king, and he only has one move. He has to take the queen, otherwise it's going to be checkmate. And with only two pieces left, the final nail in the coffin, he takes the king. So determination, patience, he was waiting, biding his time, and sacrificing pieces. We might have to sacrifice in our um, practice. Are we giving up ice cream? Are we giving up our authority, our ability to do what we want, when we want, when we want? Mm, yes, but is that sacrifice worth it? Of course, we are going for full liberation for all sentient beings. So if we have to give up a little bit of this, maybe some uh, discomfort, it's all worth it because this thing we're going for is so much higher, so much better than any other worldly thing that could possibly be offered on any advertisement that someone's trying to sell us. So let's continue to be patient and determined to attack our afflictions head on, not giving up for one second because they're very sneaky. Like a thief trying to sneak into your house, they are gonna analyze every single window and door, find the crack and try to get in the back way, the front way, the sides. But if we are vigilant, watching our afflictions very carefully, we can see their little tricks. We can apply the antidotes with very strong force we say, no, you're not going to get me today. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow, but not today. So I want to encourage everyone to stay on guard, to keep up their practice, to stay patient, and day by day moving towards full enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings.